South Africa was banned from competitive football for 35 years due to the apartheid regime, which heavily oppressed anyone that wasn't white. One way the racism manifested was in sports events, where teams containing people of more than one ethnicity were prohibited. Instinctively, it seems obvious and right that South Africa was banned for this. However, what about countries that impose the death penalty for homosexuality, like Iran? Or countries that prohibit women from attending football matches? Shouldn't they be banned too? Where do you draw the line when it comes to banning countries from football? To make an even more contemporary comparison, why does it feel more than correct that Russia have been banned due to their invasion of Ukraine? Yet football fans generally don't question the fact that other countries aren't banned for their invasions. Because there have been several other invasions in the 21st century, none of which resulted in suspension by FIFA. Hell, why wasn't Russia suspended when they originally invaded Ukraine in 2014? The most obvious reason is that Russia was the venue of the upcoming 2018 World Cup and FIFA didn't want to lose out on the financial gain that comes with organizing the biggest sporting event on the planet, especially since bribes most likely were involved when it came to selecting Russia to be hosts. Another reason is that Russia received significantly more backlash for their most recent invasion of Ukraine than in 2014, with the Czech Republic, Poland and Sweden notably threatening to withdraw from World Cup qualification. This time the repercussions for Russia were also significantly greater outside the sporting sphere, having increased sanctions imposed on them. These are likely reasons why FIFA and UEFA banned Russia in 2022. Unfortunately, it's improbable that the governing bodies merely did it out of the goodness of their hearts. However, this only answers the question regarding where you draw the line from FIFA's point of view. What about the moral perspective? As morals are inherently subjective, this is naturally a really tricky question. Is it dependent on the number of civilian casualties? Because in that case, the United States and arguably their co-belligerents should have been banned from FIFA for their 2003 invasion of Iraq, as the Russo-Ukrainian war is yet to reach that number of casualties. Is it the motive of the invasion that determines if it's morally justifiable? In some cases, definitely yes. Perhaps the most prominent example of a justified invasion is when the Allied powers attacked Nazi Germany in World War II. Nevertheless, even though some would argue that the US invasion of Iraq was more justifiable than Russia's invasion of Ukraine, even though it's of course highly debatable, it doesn't automatically make it right. Regardless, there are still some aspects which, in my opinion, makes Russia's ban more warranted than suspending other countries which have launched invasions this century. To quote Main Street, someone on a Discord server I'm on. Yes, Discord, a top-notch source for reliable information. Regardless, this is what he had to say and I'm inclined to agree for the most part. Russia was banned and they were right to be banned for the invasion of Ukraine. What is different between this and the other invasion of countries by, say, the United States and so on? It's because of another fundamental principle in the world, the general belief that democracy is the best form of government. Democracies will get a pass when they invade apparent dictatorships, because they can be seen as the good guy. Is this actually good? Quite debatable. But it is what sells here, and what people generally tend to go for. Russia is clearly undemocratic, but attacking a democracy. You can claim that Ukraine isn't a great democracy either, but certainly a lot more so than Russia. Democracies generally do not attack each other, it should be noted. But it should also be noted that with Russia's case, it's also more than this. Russia has shown fundamental contempt for every international standard that has been set for the last 20 years. Not just invading Ukraine, that was merely the final straw. Bribery of the International Olympic Committee, and probably FIFA as well, ramping doping scandals, and when getting caught with doping, they even doubled down and ran a state-sponsored doping program, abuse of younger athletes and their populace in general. On the peace level, there's also the funding of separatist regimes to destroy unity, not just in Ukraine, but also in, say, Moldova and throughout the Caucasus, 
So fundamentally, bans are sort of the last resort when you realize that a nation fails to meet any standard of uh, playing by the rules of the modern international community. Democracy, fair play in sport, peace. Russia uniquely meets none of these standards and actively spits on them. They are unique. Maybe you think all such countries should be banned, no questions asked. But then I suggest you have a look at this map. The countries in red either criminalize homosexuality or have launched invasions in the 21st century. If you suspend all of them from football, you're excluding way too much of the world in my opinion. That's why I think some type of arbitrary line is required to determine when it's actually right to ban a country from the sport. Note that the title of this video largely is rhetorical, and it doesn't have any clear right or wrong answers, which is really frustrating to me, because I, I prefer to, to, to have straight answers. Nevertheless, it's an interesting question to explore, and I'm eager to hear your thoughts on the matter in the comment section, as long as you're respectful about it. As previously mentioned at the start of the video, South Africa was banned in 1961 because their constitution prohibited racially mixed teams, which violated FIFA's non-discriminatory regulations. However, if racism violated FIFA regulations, why wasn't the United States suspended because of their racist Jim Crow laws? or any other country with institutional racism. I think that the key detail is that the United States, although plagued by racism, didn't legally prohibit black players from playing. In fact, the Haiti-born black American Joe Gatchens famously inflicted a sensational loss on England by scoring against them at the 1950 World Cup. There's also the fact that the US was basically non-existent on the world stage of football at the time. Then again, South Africa wasn't exactly a powerhouse either. In the modern day, there's also Israel, which has been accused of committing apartheid when it comes to Palestinians. For similar reasons, I think homophobic regimes are tolerated by FIFA. While openly gay players are exceptionally rare and face a lot of discrimination, it is not illegal for them to play. This only answers the question regarding where you draw the line from FIFA's perspective though. However, as mentioned earlier, there are unfortunately several countries where homosexuality is illegal, meaning many countries would have to be banned. So many it would harm the overall global progress of football, in my opinion. However, I want to emphasize that I still think homophobic regimes should not be permitted to host major tournaments like the World Cup. My stance is the same when it comes to sexist regimes that prohibit women from attending matches or countries that for whatever reason, presumably because of sexism, do not have a women's national team or domestic league. Sexism has recently become a particularly relevant issue, following the recent protests in Iran. I don't have time to go into all the details, but it's basically about women in the country wanting to be free and having equal rights. This is also applicable to the footballing scene. Despite recently making it legal for women to attend the football matches in Iran, women were prohibited from entering a stadium earlier this year. Uh, ultimately, following pressure from FIFA, the women were allowed to enter. In 2010, Qatar had to create a women's national team in order to be eligible to launch a bid to host the World Cup. However, following the 2014 Women's West Asian Football Federation Championship, the team became inactive. As of November 2022, it's as if the team doesn't exist anymore. There's also Saudi Arabia, which didn't have a women's national team until 2022. Better late than never, I guess. As problematic as these regimes are, and by extension their football associations, I don't think they should be suspended from FIFA, since it's not illegal for women to play there anymore. But again, they are not suited to host major tournaments. The last reason for which a country can be banned uh, from football that will be discussed in this video is quite tame to what has previously been talked about, but it's still worth discussing, namely third-party influence. The most recent prominent example of this was with the All India Football Federation, which was suspended in August 2022, 
due to undue influence from third parties. However, the ban was lifted only a few days later, as the AIFF agreed to elect a new administration. For once, I partially agree with FIFA, even though it's a bit hypocritical of them, given how plagued they have been and arguably still are by corruption. However, there is another side to it. Again, I'm gonna quote Main Street, since I am inclined to agree with him to an extent. Not necessarily everything, but this still lifts a relevant perspective. Third party is defined to include governments, which basically means FIFA asserts sovereignty as though it were a government, which it is not. It basically means that countries have little recourse to FIFA BS and are required to accept things that might be detrimental to the country. Granted, I'm aware that these rules can be beneficial to a limit, for example when it comes to dictatorships within the sport, but in those countries that should be solved by removing the dictator, not by FIFA. FIFA can suspend a nation for government interference if they find a national federation leadership to be corrupt or acting in ways detrimental to the country. And national federation leaders are, in the best cases, elected by select stakeholders, not the nation as a whole. So they really should be subject to oversight. The setup is designed to protect the FIFA cartel elites and prevent nations from working to improve and uncorrupt it from the inside. The fact that FIFA generally makes nations bend to its will makes this whole debacle here in 2022 incredibly bizarre, because it seems FIFA are bowing to Qatar instead, which is unprecedented. Not a good look at all to, from my perspective, lose your spine when you're dealing with a religious dictatorship, while you keep it against democracies. Uh, these topics could be discussed endlessly, but uh, this video can't be 6 hours long. Either way, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to like, comment and subscribe. If your team is playing at the ongoing World Cup, good luck to you.